Hi, this is Dr. Katherine Beatty. Today I'm going to talk about MCAT Subject 3B, Thermoregulation. In the previous videos, we talked about the respiratory system in general and its primary function of respiration. But now I want to talk to you about another really important function of the respiratory system, which is thermoregulation. So what is thermoregulation anyway? It is basically the process by which our body modifies the temperature and the moisture content of the air that we breathe. And this is really important for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that it's important in homeostasis. Homeostasis. And that is basically the way that our body maintains an internal stable state. You know, our body likes to maintain a, a, a constant temperature, which is body temperature, 98.6 degrees, and that's the temperature at which it really functions best. So we don't always find ourselves in an external environment that is 98.6 degrees. It would be very hot, first of all. So our body has to have ways to maintain that internal temperature. And thermoregulation is one of the ways that our body does this. So the other important reason that we need to have thermoregulation for our respiratory system is for gas exchange. Believe it or not, exchange. Believe it or not, our lungs are really um, preferential to the type of air that we, that we bring to it. And our lungs really want warm, moist air so that gas exchange is optimal warm, moist air, right? So if our lungs love warm, moist air, just like for homeostasis, that's not always what we um, encounter in the world. So we have to have mechanisms to make that happen. So luckily we do have those mechanisms. So let's, you know, here in New Orleans, I never have any shortage of warm, moist air. It's very muggy here. However, let's say I wanted to go to Alaska and the air there is cold and it's dry. So I would need to be able to warm and moisturize that air before it gets to my lungs. And there's lots of ways to do that. So let's talk about a few. So let's say I'm standing outside in Alaska and I'm breathing cold, dry air. Cold, dry air. And so I'm inhaling that in through my nose and into my mouth, right? So the first thing I need is that that air really needs to be warmed up. It's cold. So the neat thing is that as you pass through the nasal passage, as this air passes through the nasal passage, it's actually going to get warmed up by passing over some capillary beds. And these capillary beds in the nasal passage are full of warm blood from the body, right? So as that cold air passes over those capillary beds, it starts to warm up. So that by the time it heads down into the lungs, it's nice and warm. So you're saying, well, what if you don't go through the nose? Perhaps you're breathing through your mouth that day. Well, no worries. There's actually some capillary beds in the back of the trachea that does the same thing. So we've warmed up the, the air that we breathe. So now what? Well, we also want it to be nice and moist. So the way we do that is when you breathe that cold, dry air into your nose, Interestingly enough, there's little sort of moisture droplets that um, hang out in the nasal passages, hanging out on these things called the turbinates. And so as the air passes over these nasal passages, it sort of picks up droplets of water as it goes. So by the time it reaches those air sacs down in the lungs, we're going to have warm, moist air just like our lungs like. So, that's how we get it in. Now what happens when the air, when we exhale air? Well, if you put your hand over your mouth, you're going to notice that when we exhale, we breathe out warm, moist air. Well, that's great, except for it's a possible way for us to lose both moisture and heat. 
So we have to maintain that stable internal environment. So when we exhale warm, moist air, the great thing is, as we move that air through our nasal passages, those same moisture droplets sort of re um, situate themselves back to the nasal passages there. And so it's a sort of a way for us to conserve water loss as we breathe. And then you're thinking, well, if we could lose water that way, we certainly could lose heat that way also. And that is very true, actually. Um, and in fact, in most mammals, they use something called panting as a way to cool themselves. Panting. And what is panting? Well, I mean, you've seen it before in our in your trusty um, family dog, which is it's when they sort of breathe short, shallow breaths, really quickly. Short, shallow breaths. Breathing. And so, although most mammals do it, humans do not. But I have a puppy dog named Dixie, and she loves to sit in the sun, and she's a dachshund. And when she does sit in the sun, she just loves it. But after a while, she's gonna, she gets sort of hot, and out comes the tongue, and the panting begins. And she starts breathing really quickly, and um, this is her way of cooling off. Because she's able to, by breathing quickly and shallow, she's able to exhale air and um, reduce the heat of her body by expelling it into the atmosphere. And that, in a nutshell, is thermoregulation in the respiratory system. Hope this was helpful. Thanks.